Hi, everybody, and welcome back. Um, today we have with us uh, Seth, who is going to be doing an awesome presentation for us. Seth, go ahead and introduce yourself just a little bit and uh, tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing today. Hi, I'm Seth Holliday. I'm a faculty member at Brigham Young University, and uh, I teach animation uh, here, specifically effects animation and a lot of other things related to Houdini and production here. So a lot of variety to what I do. And I will be giving a talk about just how we integrate Houdini into our productions, particularly trying to use productions as an educational tool uh, in order to teach students more than just uh, their certain craft of modeling or, or texturing, but, but how do they learn the, the bigger picture and we feel that Houdini plays a, a big part in that, in that. So that's that's in essence what I will be covering. That's awesome, that's awesome. It's always good to hear more information about larger pipelines and how it's integrated into the, uh, the educational environment. So thank you so much for, uh, for doing that. And here we go. You're welcome. Hello, my name is Seth Holliday. I'm a faculty member at Brigham Young University and I teach for their animation program. Today I'm going to talk about how we balance the education of our students learning both hard and soft skills in a Houdini-centered Houdini production. When we started our program about 20 years ago, one of our faculty members went and spoke with Ed Catmull about what sort of things they were looking for for students coming out of college to, to get hired into the industry. And in essence, he wanted to see more students understanding production. There are lots of people coming out who could create but hadn't necessarily had production experience. So what we started was every year, we began to have our senior class make a full short length film animated production, such as this one here. This is Death of Delilah. We finished it in 2019. And this is just a snippet from the film. Uh, the way that we work this is that our senior class students, before they start their senior year, they vote on an idea for a film. And then most of the senior students, about 15 to 20, uh, join in on the project. This is enough to require roles and coordination of parts. And we want them to have challenges in these productions. Here is another example of a film we finished in 2020 called Salt. And what these productions allow students to do is one student can model uh, and focus on modeling. A concept artist can focus on concept. But they also have to work within a malleable production. They have to help each other, make sure it fits within a context, uh, whatever work they're doing, redo stuff, coordinate. And so they really do need to focus on quality of their work, but it becomes a bigger process than that. Here's another film that we finished this year uh, called Stowe. So we have to ask what really prepares them for the industry. If they work on a film, they get to really dive in deep on a particular skill set, but then they may have to help, if they're a modeler, maybe they have to also help rig, or maybe they have to help do fur or animation. Uh, and so maybe they don't get as deep on a skill as they want to. Or if, but if they were to do a project by themselves, would they be able to learn to work with people and get other soft skills? So we asked the question, what really prepares them for the industry? What balance should we prepare for them? So here are some things that we think about as we bring them into a production. And the question is, how well does this prepare them? So one thing we focus on is depth and breadth in a particular area. So the focus on quality work is a must. Uh, large studios want to know where to place students when they hire them. And, uh, but as well, small studios need versatility and generalization. So we also like students to have breadth. Even larger studios like to have the versatility in their hires. So when you're teaching depth and breadth to students, as we look at this graph, often you may look at a, a number of skills that students need to learn here at the bottom. And how much time do they spend on each skill? Well, they have one major skill that they may focus on. But then we have this model called T-learning that we often hear about where you dig deep into one topic, but then you have a bunch of other topics where you learn them a little bit. But what does breadth really mean? Does it just mean learn a bunch of skills all the same amount? And when they do, how far down that rabbit hole do you 
go? Do you learn all the skills, some of the skills? What does breadth really mean? So what we do to approach this is with our productions, it gives them students a chance to create in a context. And so they will dive deep into say rigging on a film, but then often they may have to do other skills just to help the film get finished or because there's not enough people to finish a character. So for example, if we look at this graph again of a student may focus on rigging, but also they may end up having to do an entire character and model and work with other modelers to get the rigging right. And they may have to add the fur or maybe they have to script the different elements of the rig. And so they're gaining more breadth and they're not spending on t as much time on other things as they might spend on rigging, but they spend more time broadly on more related skills and less time on something that's less related, even though they may still learn figure drawing and other things. So we call this bell curve learning, but essentially uh, students start learning how to do other things and work under the hood. Now this is actually why we like Houdini because uh, another uh, th there may be other skills in what we're seeing on, on the bottom of this graph here that are our breadth skills. Uh, for example, communication or how do node networks work or how do I dive into deep into the process of animation and not on the surface. So Houdini we found is not only great for our productions but for education. Uh, it's a unique place for students to dive deeper uh, gain depth in a skill and breadth in other areas. It uh, gives them chances to problem solve and do new things. So here's an example, not from a film, but a student of ours did a peach, made a peach focused on shading. So here's a turnaround of the peach, but to really make it look good, he also wanted to add fur. So he really focused on the shading, but, but learned some additional fur. And then doing it in Houdini, wanted to learn some VEX and understand noises better and how they layer together. And so he got this really nice under the hood experience with the VEX, uh, building his own network and with the fur and with the shading and everything. So shading was the principal focus, but it provided some automatic depth and problem solving. Another thing that we do to prepare students for industry is really focus on pipeline. So when Substance Painter started becoming more popular, we adopted it and it just worked really great. But we had a lot of studios tell us Substance is great, but can students really work with it in a production setting and you know not just show off what they've created in Substance, but bring it back into another software. And so to experience this, Houdini allowed them to do this. Uh, Houdini let us take these things further with the students to see how uh, these different softwares come together in a context. And so when we're working on our senior productions, that becomes even more complex. So for example, here, we see that Houdini can be a central hub of a pipeline and lets our students learn some USD, lets them output uh, renders to Man Mantra and to RenderMan and to pull in, in stuff from Maya and ZBrush we even get to previs some in Unreal and uh, bring over what we've set up there to Houdini, the animation and textures. Uh, there's just so much that allows students to prepare stuff to be handed down the line and used months later in a pipeline and not be breaking things as it moves through. And uh, Houdini has been very stable for allowing scripting and adaptation and uh, bringing multiple uh, outputs all together. This is also very nice because it really encourages students to communicate and interact with each other and understand how different pieces of the pipeline uh, work together. And it even becomes something like this, where we are able to bring in students from a variety of majors and uh, do they even know how to communicate? Can they speak the same language even if they're all uh, speaking English? Can computer science majors speak with illustration majors? And can we get illustration majors into a software where they have to talk to other people and understand how things work? And we've, we've had some success with this. So does this take some time away from the depth that they're able to spend on certain skills? 
It does to some extent, and that's our question. Is that ability to communicate and understand how to give and take in a pipeline make up for that? Uh, some lost time just really diving deep into, into a particular topic, which they're still able to do, just maybe to a lesser extent. Another thing that we like about these production pipelines is that it allows students to focus on solving interesting problems and dive deeper. So for example, on one of our projects, there was a, a model that was rigged in Maya and they still realized that they didn't have the deformations that they wanted working correctly. So the rigging worked out well, but then in, in the next step in Houdini, our student was able to take, take the hand and add wrinkles to where they curled. Another focus that we like students to be able to do is to work efficiently. And again, to build things and say, would this work down the pipeline or would this work for someone else? For example, we had a student who had to make an ocean for one of our, one of our senior projects. Here's the ocean. And uh, other students had to be able to use it. And it had to be able to uh, be used in a way that they could quickly set features that they needed. So Houdini's flip tools and ocean tools allowed them to easily set something up. But then also the interface tools allows the students to set up these parameters and user interfaces that quickly allowed them to do the things that they want to do. So our student could take the tools that are given and just get even deeper and make them more usable for their needs, which was a great experience for them. Even though he spent some time doing that aside from also doing the oceans. But ultimately something we really like is that they are focusing on shot work again. Will this model look amazing by itself, or will it, will it look amazing for shots? And when lighters light it, it'll, it'll come out the way they need. Another thing that shot work allows them to do is to focus on finishing a project, which is a super valuable experience. Almost every studio we talk to and say, what's important? They say, can students finish something? And so our students often have to focus deep on problems, but then join in with others on different parts of the pipeline to take up the slack and help make sure it gets finished. And uh, they feel very proud of this and it's, it sets the, them up as someone who can complete something and they know, know that that's true. So here's some examples of just things that students have come up with as they've been in these production pipelines. And these are uh, products made in Houdini uh, with with the uh, with the lighting and the rendering and the final shot completion. So here's one where they realize that uh, we, we have these two pirates. They realize that they have a stowaway and that it's a baby kraken. And uh, so our students who made the kraken got to delve in deep, make sure that the the rigging told the story, make sure that the shading tells the story, uh, make sure that. Uh, any any overlapping effects on the character workout to serve it as what's supposed to be a cute, squishy character, but also a potential threat in the future. And here are some breakdowns put together by groups of four to five students each shot. So on this one, an effects artist and a shading artist actually had to help with the lighters and with the compositing in order to make it all work together. So it was a nice collaboration. Some more problem solving here. We had a film where someone had designed some stylized trees and someone decided to take Houdini and say, we want this to be flexible. So they had this tree building tool that ended up in the final film. Worked all the way from start to finish. Our film, Death and Delilah, that we saw a little bit of earlier. This was a fun one because they designed 
it in a particular style where everything was modeled to camera, but we still wanted the lighting and the texturing to fall across the surface in a really interesting three-dimensional way. So it's like 2D but 3D, and that was a really fun problem for them to solve all the way through the pipeline and make it work all the way through to render. And then some more problem solving, also for Death and Delilah, which we'll show again in a minute. One student had seen that someone in industry had done weave tools and said, I, I think I can do that. Made it for the project, added some interest. So here are some examples of our shop again. This from Death and Delilah. And once again, the question that we ask is, how good are these productions for helping students? How, how good is the balance of the soft skills versus the hard skills? Do they get enough of the hard skills to sell themselves as, as viable workers in the industry, but also be able to demonstrate how well they can communicate with others, either bringing in a particular skill or a breadth of skills and versatility into large or small different studios. So thank you for your time.